as you can see, President Biden doesn't look too good and a lot of Democrats have thrown them away. Let's talk about it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about President Joe Biden being thrown away by a lot of top Democrats. A lot of your political pundits on mainstream media. They're like, hey, this guy is not suit to run. He's got to drop out. And it's gotten so far, there's so much of a clamor to get this guy out of the way before the DNC, which just in about two weeks time, it's at the beginning of August out there in Chicago, Illinois, it's gotten so bad that we have this article right here. This is on Axios. It was posted about four hours ago. Behind the curtain, top Democrats now believe Biden will exit. So the word on the street, and from right here, I'm reading this. I'm not making it up myself. I'm not the source they tried to cite. They have pretty good sources. Axios is a pretty uh, trustworthy website. They're saying by this weekend, Biden will be out. And I think that they have to get him out sooner than later because the DNC is upon us. It's right after the RNC and just in about two to three weeks time, you got to have somebody to be the nominee and they're saying it's not going to be Joe Biden. Now, let's look at this here, okay? Because a lot of the media have been reacting to this kind of news and also to the fact that Biden has COVID-19 now, which is pretty interesting. Oh, he has mild symptoms, they say. Oh, okay, well, we'll see how that works out because Biden previously said that if he was diagnosed with a big medical condition, that he'd drop out. So this could go a different direction. But of course, I will link to all the clips and the articles and whatnot in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. It's not so much the COVID diagnosis, it's the avalanche of bad news, right? right? Yeah. And this is really the make or break moment for the campaign. This is where campaigns, I would argue, are, are won or lost. Will they survive this? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's, look, all of a sudden the news is leaking today that Chuck Schumer told him it's over over the weekend we knew chuck schumer was going to have you know a meeting with him right jeffries did it one-on-one -on -one. we knew he was going but to me it's not an accident that now after adam shifted what he did after more polling data now it's coming out there's nobody in leadership in the democratic party that's trying to argue for him to stay in the race right Bernie Sanders is certainly an influential voice in part of the party, but he's not really an elected leader. So when you take him away, right now, that's Joe Biden's biggest advocate to stay in the race are Bernie Sanders and AOC. Nobody else. Nobody else. So, and what Chuck is saying is right. And it's crazy that the media will sometimes just be honest. A lot of times it's political stuff and advertisers and, you, okay, what side of the particular thing are we on? Are we on the pro or the anti? They got to play that game. But sometimes it just let loose and be real. And I appreciate those moments, although they're few and far in between when you're talking about the mainstream media, even on the conservative side as well. Now, here's Van Jones talking about Biden's COVID diagnosis in comparison to Trump being shot at a rally on Saturday and then going to the RNC on Monday. A bullet couldn't stop Trump. A virus just stopped Biden. You've got the nominees of this party getting their butts kissed. Biden's getting his butt kicked by his own party. The Democrats are coming apart. The Republicans are coming together. <laughs> that was that was pretty well said. You know, I don't know about kissing the high parts and all of that. I don't know what that's all about. But aside from that, what he said was right on point. And what he's talking about is for, as far as the virus stopping Biden. As soon as they said that he has COVID-19, he canceled all of his uh, engagements, meetings, whatever. Canceled everything. Okay, I got the virus. I have mouth symptoms now. Don't worry about it. It's not too bad, they say. But I'm not going to be able to do anything else for the foreseeable future. Meanwhile, Trump gets shot. Almost gets shot in the head and deleted, but he gets shot right on his ear on Saturday. And then he's at the RNC on Monday, a triumphant return to the spotlight. So, and that speech tonight is going to be crazy at the RNC. Uh, here's more. I almost forgot about, um, I almost forgot about Cory Booker. Remember him? The guy that I think they were trying to make be the Obama successor because of the way he looks. All right. He may look like, you know, uh, a light-skinned black guy kind of 
right in the center, not too, not too dark, not too light, but he's not Obama at the end of the day. You know, at a certain point, there's more to someone's personality than their skin color. But let's go ahead and see what he says. So do you think this is building again? Do you think that this is going to change the outcome? I think the president has shown extraordinary leadership over his 50 year career, and he's facing a real uh, um, question of what is best for the country. And I think he'll make that decision. A lot of us are doing everything we can behind the scenes uh, to really talk openly and honestly with the president, with his team about the best way forward. We've had private meetings in DC all last week. So what does it sound like? It sounds like they're trying to make him step down. I, but I don't even understand why, because y'all knew what y'all had from the beginning. Y'all knew this man was old and frail before 2020. So why act so shot now? And if you really wanted to get him out this time, then you should have been doing more in the primary. Nobody really challenged him. RFK and Marianne Williamson, these are not real contenders. Put your best out there. You, you should have put Gavin Newsom on the campaign trail in 2018. That's what you should have done. That was an obvious pick, but here I am giving them advice again for some reason. If they want to collapse, if they want to crash and burn, then that's fine. That's on them. That's a decision to make, not mine. But I digress. I don't want to have this conversation in public. I'm just, I just think that that's not wise right now while the Republicans are having their convention. I want to get everybody to refocus on what we have done over the last four years. Congressional yeah. Democrats have lowered the cost of insulin and health care. Congressional Democrats, along with President Biden, have passed extraordinary infrastructure bills, things that have made a real difference in the lives of folks. So I know that Donald Trump and his team want to try to pit Democrat against Democrat. Uh, I think this is a time where we should be all telling a common story about what we have done together as a party with Joe Biden yeah. as our leader, with incredible congressional Democrats. So, and, and obviously Joe Biden is saying the same thing you're saying. But the only thing that you just said there, which actually harkens back to Nancy Pelosi, is you said a decision to be made. He's made a decision. He tell us every day he's made a decision. Yet we keep hearing from senior members of your party, like yourself, that he'll make a decision. So. <laughs> Because they, meaning the Cory Bookers of the world, the Democrats who want him out, they're holding on to faith that it's going to happen. They're holding on to, okay, he's going to drop out. He's going to leave. He may say one thing publicly, but we believe something else privately. Look, I understand that this is a bit of rhetoric, but it seems like you and others want him to get out. Look, we, we have a great party with good party rules. Right now, he is our presumptive nominee. There is a process going forward when he will be the nominee. That process gives him a lot of chance to evaluate things, to look at facts, <laughs> and make the decisions about what's best for the It's funny. It's funny seeing him fall apart like this, but I don't even understand. I don't really get it. As I close, I want to say this. Why do all this right now? What is the purpose? Are you trying to create civil unrest? Because... Again, you guys knew who he was prior to 2020. You knew that he was elderly and declining mentally. We've been saying that from the beginning. Ever since we saw this man, we saw that he was declining. We saw him do the basement tour and COVID was the excuse back then. So is it, is it the excuse now? Is he going to do more of the basement tour because he sit with COVID? Like what's going on? <laughs> or is he just not going to do anything at all because he has COVID? So we're not even just going to do the basement thing like we did in 2020. We're just going to totally cancel the event and not do any kind of virtual, nothing, no kind of meetup, no kind of makeup dates or nothing. This whole thing is crazy. Y'all knew who you had from the beginning. You waiting way too late in the game to try and change things now because regardless of what, you want to put somebody else in there, now Kamala Harris is slighted. You want to put... Um, you you want to put somebody in there that people don't like is going to be the same thing as if you had Biden in there. You're still going to have the end solution be what it is. Again, y'all should have put Gavin in there back in 2018, put him on the campaign trail. I saw that he met with Xi Jinping. I saw that he was over. He might have been in Davos. This is Nancy Pelosi's nephew. It was an easy, no contest, layup, slam dunk, but you didn't do it. So now you're going to lose again. And we're going to be in office for quite a few years. We're going to put in three Supreme Court justices. What are y'all going to do? Be on the sidelines crying. And we might get the House and the Senate. 
because your man Goat Bar Bob, Bob Menendez just got locked up to make Bit Rock to Little for collecting Bit Rock's of Goat Bars and cash for bribes for some Egyptian, Egyptian businessman. It is what it is. I think it's a good thing. If you're on the left and you're upset, hey, you've made your bed. Now you got to lie in it. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on this whole situation? Do you think that um, <laughs> what Cory Booker and everybody, Chuck Chai, all of them are saying is going to happen, that Biden may not be the guy? Are they going to replace him? Is he going to drop out? You saw that Axios article I showed you at the beginning that just came out today. They're saying, hey, man, by close of business Friday, Biden is going to be out of here. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I love to see it happen. I love to see them collapse at the zero hour, uh, collapsing in the clutch. Okay, it's it's a it's a two point game. You got the ball. It's five seconds left. What you gonna do? Turn it over, throw it out of bounds, get ejected, get a foul, miss, break, or is it going to be a layup? For us, it's going to be a layup. Not so much for y'all, and I think that's fine. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.